This video is going to be about phospholipids. So as the name implies, a phospholipid is going to be a lipid with a phosphate group in it. So I've drawn the structure of a phospholipid over here, and some parts of the structure might look familiar to you guys. So right here, we have our phosphate group. And then this group right here is actually a glycerol. And then these two fatty acids down here are just fatty acids. Um, they could be anything, so that's one point of diversity in phospholipids is the fatty acids that are attached to this glycerol molecule. Um, so this one right here would be saturated, and then this fatty acid right here would be an unsaturated fatty acid. And so something about, important about unsaturated fatty acids is this unsaturated um, fatty acid is gonna have a kind of kink in its structure, so it's gonna have a bend because of the presence of this cis double bond, and that's gonna be true for all unsaturated fatty acids. So second point of diversity in uh, phospholipids is what's attached to this phosphate group. So in this case, this group right here is called a choline. Um, and so this whole phospholipid is going to be called a phosphatidylcholine. So here we have the phospho, which is the phosphate group, and then the choline from that choline group. Um, and so something that's really important about phospholipids, regardless of whether it's phosphatidylcholine or some other kind of um, phospholipid, is that phospholipids have uh, two distinct regions. So from this line down is going to be the hydrophobic region. So hydrophobic, so it's going to try to stay away from water. It's going to try to interact with other things that are also hydrophobic. So from this line up, though, is the hydrophilic half of this molecule. So that means from this side up, um, it's capable of interacting with water, and it would like to interact with water. And so whenever we have a molecule that has two regions, one that's hydrophobic, one that's hydrophilic, that molecule is called amphipathic. So phospholipids are always going to be amphipathic molecules, which means they have a hydrophobic and a hydrophilic region, so they can interact with both uh, hydrophobic substances and hydrophilic substances. So this is going to be really important when we look at membrane structure and membrane formation, because phospholipids make up the majority of our membranes, um, and they're able to do this because they have this um, hydrophobic region that can interact with other hydrophobic regions on neighboring phospholipids, as well as this hydrophilic region, which can point towards the outside of the cell or the cytoplasm of the cell and interact with water in those areas. And so just to review, um, we have a hydrophobic portion, a hydrophilic portion, which makes the molecule amphipathic. In the hydrophobic portion, we have our glycerol and our two fatty acids, which don't necessarily have to be the same, but they can be. And then in our hydrophilic portion, we have our phosphate group, which is also constant um, from all phospholipids. And then we have something attached to that phosphate group. In this case, it's choline, but that will always be the case. It can be a uh, variety of other groups. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu slash tutoring. Thank you.